White Socks Only by Evelyn Coleman. Illustrations by Tyrone Geeter. Grandma, can I walk into town by myself, I asked, one hot summer day. I knew what she was going to say. She was going to tell a story. Not just any story, but my favorite story. I watched her turn to that spit can. Ping! Her snuff juice hit the bottom, sounding like a chime. She rocked one or two times, her eyes closed, and she looked up at me. You know you ain't big enough to walk in no town alone, girl. I sure don't know why you asked me that. You ain't big enough to you don some good there. I smiled and plopped down on the step. She was about to begin the story. Grandma laughed. You know, when I was a little girl like yourself, I snuck into town once. Yep, all by myself. Wasn't planning on doing no good. I just had been waiting for a scorching hot day. I had two eggs hid in my pocket. Not to eat, mind you, but to see if what folks said was true. I slipped on my finest Sunday dress and my shiny black patent leather shoes and my clean white socks. I put my plates back with the bow. Why, I thought I looked pretty grown up. Lord, you should have seen me strutting. Dust flying behind me. I had to hold my arm steady on account of them eggs, though. Now, that I think about it, my, I must have been a pretty mighty funny sight. I snuck on up that road singing, drum back, Sally, 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 walking up that alley, alley, alley to nobody but myself. And child, it was hot on that day. A firecracker might light up by itself. I was feeling pretty fine until I spotted that old chicken man sitting on his porch with his mouth like a smile. I just looked down at the door. My mom had told me about the chicken man still did things he known all the way from Africa. Stuff like that his grandmother taught him. Mama High also told me he could heal the sick by just laying on one of his hands. And that one time he made a blind man see just by looking deep into his eyes. And folks said he turned people into chickens if he didn't feel like what they were doing was right. That's why we called him the chicken man. I was kind of scared he might think I wasn't doing right, so I started walking faster. I still held my arms out steady, though, so I wouldn't break the eggs. Anyway, when I got to town, I didn't see many folks that I knew. I wandered around with my mouth gapped open, looking at a white woman in their fancy hats. That's when I saw Mama's friend, Miss Nancy, turning the corner. I was sure enough be in trouble if she saw me. She told Mama everything. So I took off running towards the first big tree I saw and hid behind it. I stayed there for a minute, panting, until I saw Miss Nancy walk out of sight. Then I tiptoed. But in my rush, I burst one of my eggs, and it was slinking down my dress and legs. I figured I'd better do what I came to do and get back home. I was standing in front of this big old building where there was a statue of a soldier sitting up on a horse. I read what it said, Cold Country Courthouse, Mississippi. I carefully put one of my eggs out of my pocket. Right there, I cracked it one time against the horse's leg. The egg insides dropped onto the hot cement. I kneeled down with my face close. I watched that egg like the old man watched the checkers before making a move. For a minute, I thought I wasn't gonna do nothing. But right around the edges, I saw it. 
One little bit was turning white. The next white creep wider and wider, and the yellow began to bubble. By golly, I was frying an egg on the cement, just like folks said. I jumped up and down and started dancing and prancing. Now it was time to go home. I done it. That was it. Was all over, and it was true. It could get so hot you could fry an egg on the sidewalk. I started walking and wiping sweat off from my face with the eggy part um, of my dress sticking to me every time I took a step. My mouth was dry as dirt and I was mighty thirsty. That's when I spotted the water fountain. It had a little cecil so children could climb up to drink. But on the fountain I was a sign that read whites only. Well, I knew what that meant. So I sat down in the grass, took off my shiny black patterned leather shoes. Now I only had my clean white socks on. I stepped on the, that stool with those white socks, hugging my feet. I was slurping up that water mighty fast when this big white man in a black and white mandetta round his neck grabbed me off the stool and pushed me to the ground. The white man pointed to the sign and yelled at me, "Can you read, girl? Why I'm gonna whip you till you can't sit down." His big fingers fumbled and tugged at his belt. I began to cry as a crowd of white people gathered round. They were all staring at me. Seeing all the people made me real scared, and I cried louder. I couldn't understand why that white man was so mad about. I was wearing my white socks. An old black woman from my church stepped through the crowd. She wasn't wearing anything white, but she untied her shoes and took them off. She stepped up to the fountain, bent way down, and took a drink. I knew the man was gonna yell at her, and he did. I'm gonna have to whoop you too, ain't I? He shouted. But then other black folks started coming over, removing their shoes and drinking from the fountain. They had clean-looking green socks and yellow socks and red socks and blue socks. Of course, the big man with the bandana kept right on yelling. His face got as red as fire. He was snorting through his nose like a bull does when it's gonna charge. Other white folk came up and started yelling at us too. By that time, the big man had his belt out of his pants. He was hitting me and everyone else who was close. None of the black people moved. They just covered their faces. I sat there sobbing, holding my arms up from my head. All of a sudden, everyone got quiet, like they was gonna pray in church. Even the white people. I peeped out through my arms. The black people and the white people were moving aside. The chicken man was coming through. He was slowly tapping his way towards me. When he got close, he stopped. He looked at me from the top of my head down to my white socks. He bent over and pulled off his black shoes. His face squeezing up. He had his cleanest white socks you ever seen. He stepped on that stool. He didn't have to bend over very far, cause he was so short. He drank a long time from that fountain. I held my breath. So did everyone else. The chicken man lifted his hand. He turned around, smiling, and slowly stepped down off the stool. Without a word, he pointed his a crooked finger at the white man. The white man's belt was way down by his side, clasped tightly in his fist. He was as still as a statue. The old chicken man helped me up. He took out his white handkerchief and wiped off my face. There, there now, child. You, it's time for you to go on home. You did all right. He handed me a chicken feather out of. His brim hat and hobbled away. 
All the black people surrounded me. They were all crying and hugging me. Then they took me home. When they told Mama what happened, she just broke out laughing. She said, "Well, I guess you can go to town all by yourself now, 'cause you're old enough to do some good." Nobody ever saw that big white man who had whipped us. None of us dared ask about the big chicken flapping around the courthouse near the water fountain either. And from then on, the white only sign was gone from that water fountain forever.